After a year of renovating with many delays and hoping tradesmen would be available and show up to work, it seems like we've made it to the top of the priority list, which has allowed us to make some major pretty progress here at the cottage. This is gonna be such an exciting week here at the cottage because there's so many things happening on the exterior and interior. All the things. Not only am I gonna be working on projects, but they're also gonna be working on tons of projects and I'm so excited. Some projects I didn't even know we were gonna start yet, but I'm super excited <laughs> that it's happening. So you guys saw that they put up all of the sheetrock. We did encounter some bad weather, so they weren't able to tape and float and finish all of the sheetrock, but they were able to hang it. So now they're getting started on taping, floating, putting level five, finish in the main house and also adding texture to the sheetrock that's in the addition the back of the house we went with an orange peel and they're going to be scraping it um, so it has a little bit of a smoother texture um, but it's just super finished and polished i'm going to be continuing to work on finishing up all of the windows <laughs> trim finish i'm just trying to do outdoor projects at this point i've already started adding some trim to the bottom of the windows which i really think like finishes it out and also filling all of the holes painting the trim another coat just getting it all completed while they're working on the inside and we found a mason to work on our rock on the exterior. When I started designing this renovation a year ago, I really wanted to bring something to the house that was locally sourced and also so the house looked like it fit here. I mean, it's obviously been here for 111 years now. When you drive through town and you drive around, there's so much limestone rock as a material and detail on all of the buildings that are older and newer. You'll see limestone in various forms. Some will be like more rounded and darker with lots of yellow. Some will be really, really squared off, little bit of mortar in between. Some is overground some is not it's it's all different influences it's in all different areas but limestone is really readily available here that's why it's used so much and I really wanted to bring that detail to the house in my own way so I have loved pictures of overgrouted rock for years Liam Ford did it on rock the block in a kitchen it's beautiful uh, Joanna Gaines has it in the cooking kitchen for her those two rooms have really inspired me and also a local building here it's actually a wedding venue here where they get married I was in there one day and I took this picture and I thought it was beautiful the darkness to it and the the depth to it it had more of a rounded look but maybe not maybe it was just because it was over grouted. so I snapped the picture because I loved the messy look to it I love that it was kind of this is how they did it back then kind of primitive it wasn't so perfect I don't like anything too too perfect I sent it to my contractor and I was like this is kind of what I'm looking for here's the topper that I love I love that the smoke would go up and out of the top I think that it kind of has like a, a European kind of look to it so I sent those to my contractor and I met with the mason what I like most about this is how heavy the grout is oh, okay. I want it to want be like thick. smeared on top yeah so thick like grout. Because I don't want to see much of the snow. This topper, how it has the. One is lab day, that's mm -hmm. the yeah. And then later, we're going to be building a fence out here. And I'm going to, I can show you that later, but we're going to have wrought iron fence, but um, kind of, okay, the columns. columns. Yeah. And so there's going to be one, two, three, four, five. So is this the rock that you'll use? Or it's similar. 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 A little yellow and white. White. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The white or so the white. So I have much of those combined out. It's going to be a combination of both. Okay. The mortar mix is going to be like a white, uh, beige, almost cream colored kind of. I love that. But it's going to be rustic. It's going to make it look like that. Same like this. Rustic. But once we talked about it, he said he was going to send me some pictures, what types of rock was available, what kind of look. Here are all the pictures that he sent me. He sent me the, the one that he thought was closest first because I, obviously that was the one that I was going to like the most. But here were all of the options. I loved the one he sent me. I loved that there was a little bit of dark peeking through. It really like looked messy and unique and I loved it. So I was like, it's a go. Yes do it let's do it we already framed it out it's five and a half foot on the bottom and then it cuts into three and a half because i felt like going up five and a half all the way up was just it was too much it was gonna look too it's too much it needed to kind of cut in like that and i want there to be a, a slope there and then go straight up 
we, we're gonna save a lot of money by doing a second project with the rock, five columns along the front of the house, and I want a black wrought iron fence in between that my dad and I are actually going to build. Columns are going to sit four and a half to five foot, depending on like rock size. You know, I was like in between there is great. Putting that rock in multiple places on the property is gonna make it look really cohesive and purposeful and just make it look like a detail that's around. So I just didn't want it just on the fireplace. Love. I hate the yellow. They're instructed not to use the yellow. What's in here? Whoa. It's like sand, right? Yeah, it's like sand. So they've got all this rock ready to go up, which is very exciting. Look how pretty. I love the darker ones. I know that that probably won't stay, but I love the darker ones and the white ones. I don't really like the yellow, so they're kind of going that direction. Um, but they dug a hole and they leveled a concrete slab. So this is gonna dry. They did the form, so this is gonna dry overnight. On day two, the cement was dry, so they were able to start on the rock, and they got pretty far. They got all the way from the bottom to just under the eave on the house, and I worked with them on how much mortar I actually wanted on the house and how much overgrouted look I wanted, and I'm loving it. I actually had them put more. <laughs> um, so this is the more version of it, and I'm loving it. And the mortar is gonna dry a little lighter than this, so it's gonna blend really nicely. On day three, they continued working on the rock and they got all the way up to the top and it's beautiful. Then they're gonna come back with the topper, the legs and the flat stone on the top and also do this little angle along the sides and it's looking so good. They also got started on the columns. They poured the cement foundation, just like they did for the fireplace. And then the next day, they started going up with the rock. And just all this rock detail is just giving such a pretty textural look to the house. And they also came to put the metal roof on the porch. So we're making progress. Okay, so we're back in the pantry back door coffee pantry area right off the kitchen. Walls along the exterior were part of the original dining room. And we had beadboard walls in there, all in the dining room, all in the uh, bathroom area, and up on the ceiling. So anywhere that we could keep the beadboard detail, I wanted to keep. Um, so there were a couple of places that just needed to be patched. This, is, this whole area is gonna be <laughs> a real big work in progress. Uh, because I wanted to keep this original fireplace that obviously they hadn't been using for years and um, it was just kind of like a detail I wanted to keep. So I wanna do like this really cool shelf up there above the coffee bar and have this little like coat area. This is gonna be really cute, but it's gonna take a little bit of finessing and, and some time for me to figure out how to make it into what I want. But our project for today is just to put and replace some of the beadboard that was there. So Romeo has been sanding the amount of beadboard pieces that I needed. And these are all salvaged pieces too, maybe from the walls. They're 12 foot tall. <laughs> So that helps a lot. So it's just one piece per section. So we're just gonna put these up with my nail gun. And the luxury of salvaging from the house is we have all the original wood in the right size. I'm gonna secure this one first. So I had 
Okay, we got that side done. I'm gonna have to, I mean, all of these beadboard pieces aren't very uh, perfect. <laughs> um, so caulking the seams helps a lot. And that's what we're gonna be doing on, on the sides of these as well uh, once we get to the painting stage in here. But I have two slivers right on the side of the fireplace that I need to put beadboard to. And the reason I waited is because I wanted them to be able to put the sheetrock up all the way uh, to have something to nail into and then I was gonna come back with the, the beadboard. So I already have those pieces, the smaller pieces here, these two. I need to measure exactly how wide these pieces need to be so that I can cut them with a skill saw outside. Looks like two inches will do it here. Okay. And we're gonna cut these two inches. Cut off the bottom lip on the groove, I guess the tongue groove, groove, <laughs> the bottom so that it fits onto the other one really nicely. This should work nicely here. Oh yes, beautiful! Look at that. Beautiful. Isn't that nice? It's perfect. Oh, yeah, I did that good. done another project obviously we're gonna have a fireplace so originally in my original design I wanted to do one of those like wood burning stoves as a fireplace and I wanted it kind of set in to a fireplace and I was gonna do this like rock detail inside as well then as you guys know I found the most beautiful mantle and it's ornate and pretty, it's got lots of character and lots of detail. And so when I started to think about the design and using that mantle, I redesigned the kind of idea for this fireplace based on that mantle. I couldn't imagine it with rock. And I, I love the rock for the outside, but I couldn't imagine rock behind this mantle. It, it felt um, complicated in a weird way. It felt uncomfortable. It felt like a juxtaposition of materials I didn't want to use and way too busy. Because of how ornate the mantle was, I couldn't imagine so much texture and so much movement on the fireplace wall itself. And rock is expensive unless you do like a veneer or something. So I was like, okay, let's just not do the rock look for here. Then I thought I started to think, okay, do I really see this stone wood burning stove, oven, fireplace, the Scandinavian look, which is, is really common in this area and probably what our house had at one time. Do I really see that sitting inside the fireplace? And I just did it. It wasn't it. So I abandoned that idea too. <laughs> Basically the mantle changed all plans. So we went to a local fireplace um, place, fireplace place, here in town and took a look at all of our options. We already have gas run, here's the gas. I wanted a real flame. So the major difference between electric fireplaces and gas powered or wood burning is a real flame. Gas and wood burning has a real flame. Electric does not. I'm not a big fan of electric fireplaces. They're really modern. It's a fake kind of flame or a, a 
something to kind of look like a flame. They're very safe. They can put off a lot of heat. It just, it's not for this house. It's not, it's not for me. It's not for this house. We took a look at all the different options and this is the one that we picked. It's gonna arrive on Wednesday. They're gonna start installing it on Friday. I'm very excited about that. By then, all of the rock and everything will be done up to the point where they need it to be. Since we now have the exact dimensions of the fireplace, insert, I have to change this framing. Luckily, I can do it myself, and I know how. Well, but I forgot my measurements at home, so maybe that'll be a project for tomorrow, but now you know the direction that we're going for the fireplace. I wish I had the words, or more words, to express how in love I am with this fireplace and this column. I love them so much. You have no idea. I'm obsessed with them. I can't stop staring at pictures I've taken of them. This is amazing, amazing, be pretty, pro pretty progress. What I've been trying to get to for so long, the pretty part, the design, the, the vision to come to life, the fireplace. I wish the scaffolding was down so that we could actually like step back from it and see it just a little better. It's so pretty. It's more beautiful than I imagined, which is so good. I did not know what to expect. I've never done rock like this or hired people to do rock. It's just, it's stunning. And they're coming back tomorrow. It's, it's a mess. They're coming back tomorrow to clean everything up. You know, all the rest of the rock, all of the, you know, just like waste and stuff. So he wants me to look over everything. If I want more mortar, less mortar, change something, they will do it tomorrow. They also have to take off the topper. How the fireplace, the actual fireplace insert and the, the vents for everything go in, it has to be dried in from the top with metal and the, 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 the piping and everything. They're gonna have to get in there. Now we knew that going into this rocking stage. Um, so they were supposed to leave it off and the foreman knows that. Then they'll leave the scaffolding and they'll come back and put that on after the fireplace goes in and it's all dried in up there. So we're, we're still making a lot of progress. Such an amazing detail. <sighs> the columns. I am in love. So this is gonna be, this is gonna have a gate in between. So a walk through, pass through gate right here, going up and leading up to the front door. So we have five columns, two at the end of the house, two, one and two, and then one down at the end of the property, and then two here surrounding the front door. Um, I didn't do them over where we're gonna be doing the driveway, which I'll show you plans for later on. We're gonna do that after all the construction is done and we work on the guest cottages and like things like that. My plan for the gate is, I'll put in some inspiration pictures of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I want it part wood, part iron. And uh, the rest of the fence will be iron. In between each of these columns will be iron panels. And here is my sketch for what I want it to look like. And it's going to be black, painted black, black wrought iron. My dad and I are going to DIY it together. He's an amazing welder and he's done so many projects for my parents' house. So we're going to do it together. I want the panels to sit further back. So they're not going to be in the center of the columns or the front of the columns. They're going to be towards the back because I want to plant some flower beds in front of all of the, the gate along the front and then we can grow something that is gonna live well here. Something that the deer might not eat because <laughs> we have a lot of deer or the rabbits. Uh, so we'll have to look when we start to landscape. As far as the interior, they have made a lot of progress. Sheetrock is a process. You know, they put it up and then they tape it and then they float it a couple of days and then it dries and then they go back and they do it again and then it dries and then they did the level five. It's like just, days long that they had so they've been coming every day they were supposed to come today this morning and texturize the back part but they didn't come i'm not sure maybe they realized it was saturday i don't know, I don't know. But it looks so good so we did level five in here basically it's a skim coat that they put on top so it's a whole nother layer which really helps when you have a room with loads of sunlight so you can't tell the difference between where it's been taped and floated and the texture of the sheetrock. So I read. I'm trying to level up my knowledge of, <laughs> of all things home renovation related. So we did level five in here and on the ceilings, except for in this area behind the, all the cabinetry. I was like, it doesn't make sense to pay extra for level five back there. Um, so they're gonna texturize that, but all the living room, the ceiling, all in here in the dining room is all level five and then over on this side as well here 
here. You can see where they would come every morning and mark or circle the foreman would come and he would point out where it needed more touch-ups, more things. So I, I really liked them. They were, they were really good. And then in here, it's not level five. They're gonna texture in here uh, because it's the pantry. Cabinetry is gonna go back here. It's the back door area. That didn't make sense. Only in the rooms where it was like the old house and a lot of sunlight. Um, so when we come back here, when you enter the addition, it's all gonna be textured. It's great, they've taped and floated. It looks polished and clean. And then once we texturize it, it'll look even better. Fingers crossed it looks good. We were supposed to know today, but we, we don't yet. But it looks so good back here. I mean, I mean everything. They've done everything they did. All in here in the guest bedroom. And all through here, the, the guest bathroom's all done. A lot of in here, I've kind of told them not to texture where I'm gonna be putting tile. So I'm gonna go through and, and mark that. This looks great. Hallway, primary suites all done. Look at the sunlight even at night. Like it's the afternoon, like it's like 5.30. You know when it's later because the birds are chirping. Mm. They're just gonna spray it and we're done. And we can kick them out. And then the electricians can come back. The AC, oh, come let me show you the AC unit. I don't know why I would, you know, expect people to love AC units, but I was like, this is kind of a pretty AC unit. Look at this. The condenser is so nice. Look how nice it is. So this is just one. We actually have two AC units for the house. One is going here to the, for the addition, and then another one is going to go by the fireplace in the front. When they first started building these columns, I stood up to this one and I was like, I'm five six, so I'm at five and a half feet. This is almost taller than me. I was like, it wasn't supposed to be this tall. Why are they so tall? But they're supposed to be level. They were supposed to be four and a half to five foot tall, and that one's four and a half to five foot tall. Then they get taller and taller and taller and taller and taller as they come down. So that just shows how uneven and unlevel our land is here. So we're gonna bring, be bringing in topsoil and leveling everything out, doing a lot of yard work, so I'm super excited. We've made some major pretty progress this week. All we need is texture and they're done. And I can roll up the paper and we can get started on the flooring. I'm gonna still work on the guest bathroom makeover. That's an ongoing process. Uh, so stay tuned on how they all come out. Hit the subscribe button and subscribe if you are not already. Hit the bell notification so you know exactly when I upload here and even more content over on my blog channel. Comment down below if you can ever see yourself putting overcrowded rock detail in your home. I will see you guys again on Sunday and again on the blog channel on Tuesday. In the meantime, I will stand here and stare at these columns in that fireplace until the sun sets. These were heavy. They did this all day. Like, no. Oh my God, there's an armadillo. That's what's living under my shed. Hey, you're living under my shed.